This is our first picture. We are doing a nice spring lagoon. We've got some lily pads down there and some pink trees with a background that just kind of makes us happy. So we are gonna work on this painting today. The first thing we're gonna do, this is up to you how you have this, but I like to paint my backgrounds with a two inch chip brush. It goes fast, um, it's easy to blend. If you don't have one, any type of flat brush will work. And a flat brush is called flat because if you look, it's pinched right here by the middle and it makes all of your bristles lay flat. So that is a flat brush right there. I like my flat brushes a lot. So whether you have a two inch chip brush or if you have a flat brush, if you don't have either one, any type of brush will work. That This part doesn't matter as much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the background first. We're gonna dip with our large space of white paint and there's two different ways to get paint on a brush. You can either put just the bristles in or you can do what I call an ice cream scoop. And an ice cream scoop is when there's a lot of paint on there. This is how most little people like to paint. The more paint on the brush, the better it is. A lot of times with adults though, they wanna just put a little itty bitty paint on there. Don't, you can get more paint, use a lot. I always like to start with the easiest step first. And this step is painting the top half of your canvas white. Sounds kind of silly because your canvas is already white, but we're gonna be blending colors. So what you're gonna do is you are going to take your paintbrush and you are gonna paint a line across the middle of your canvas. What I'm gonna do to kind of help you out with that is I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm just gonna add a little bit of purple right where that line is so that you can see. Now, if you're adding purple right now, I know you're not listening because I said I'm going to add purple, but I want you guys to see where that line is. So it's right about halfway. All you're gonna do is you're gonna paint the entire top white, okay? I like to go um, with whichever direction my brush strokes are gonna be ending up. So in this case, my background has a lot of vertical lines in it. So I'm gonna make sure that my brush strokes are gonna go vertical. Don't take a long time on this. Don't worry if you miss a spot or two. You just wanna get the whole background covered in. So cover that background in pretty quick because we want this white paint to be wet so we can mix in our next set of colors. I'll give you just a second to get that white paint on there. Again, don't worry if there's like chunks of paint laying around. Um, just get it painted. I like to paint fast. I am not going to wipe my brush off, so I still have white paint on my brush. Not gonna wipe my brush off. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use just the corner of my brush, and I wanna show you to see how little that is. Just a little bit of blue paint, do you see that? Just a little bit of blue paint. And I'm going to put it in a couple lines on my canvas so I did a line here, a line here, and a line there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna brush that in. Now, the more and more I go over this line and the further I move it to the left and the further I move it to the right, the more it kind of dissipates and makes a nice background color. If you just do it once, you're gonna have this kind of harsh line. You don't want a harsh line. You wanna kind of brush it out. so that you have a nice background color. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? You're gonna do the same thing. I am not washing my brush, but I'm gonna do the exact same thing with a little bit of pink. So just a corner, just a corner of pink is all you need. Put a couple dots on there. You're gonna notice as I teach paint classes that I like to do everything in threes. There's this rule in art, it's the rule of thirds, and. It makes you think that um, your, well, it doesn't make you think, your eye is more interested in things when they are in groups of three. That's why when you look at fancy magazines and in fancy stores, you'll see candles are in groups of three. Pillows are in odd number groups. Odd numbers are more interesting to your eye. So I've got my blue, I've got my pink. I'm gonna now do a little bit of purple. So same rule, just a little bit on the corner and I'm going to add, oops, I forgot my polka dot. You guys will realize that although I'm a professional art teacher, 
and I really enjoy teaching art, I'm not the most professional. Let's go ahead and add that purple in there. And then when you get to this point, you can look at your background and think to yourself, you know, I love the color pink. I want to add more pink. Or you might want a little bit more blue. This is the time where you can go in and you can edit and you can add more. Maybe your colors are all too dark. Maybe you did something like this, where you've now got these really, really, really dark shades of blue in there. If that is your problem right now, it's an easy fix. So I'm gonna take, I like to use rags instead of paper towels because I can rewash them. Um, these have been used a long time, but I'm gonna use my rag and I'm just gonna pull that paint off. It's very rare that I will use my water bowl because I like the way paints mix. I'm an elementary art teacher. I, I like to see messy. So after your brush is clean, I can grab some white paint and I can go back in there over those colors and lighten them up. Pull them out. The further you pull them to the sides, the more they're gonna lighten up. So add some white on there, pull them across. Don't go left to right. You'll start to get a pattern that is not consistent with what we're looking for. Maybe add a little bit of pink in there. See, everything you do in art can be fixed. You just have to believe that you can do it. You have to try and you have to continue to work at it. All right, I think I'm happy with this background. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna wipe it off really good. If you need to take a break right now, that your background's finished, or if you're still playing with your background, just hit pause. You can join us when you're ready. Let's talk about this bottom space. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did with the top, but we're gonna do horizontal lines. Those are lines that go left to right. So my brush might be a little messy still, that's okay. I'm gonna paint everything down here on the bottom horizontally. So my brush strokes are going different. I'm going from left to right, but I am still painting fast. because I want to make sure that my background is still wet when I start to add my paint to it. All right, so my background is now all white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with blue. So my brush is still full of white paint. Again, I love to mix colors. And I'm going to add just a corner of blue on my brush. And I'm going to put these lines going horizontal again because we are working on water. And if you've ever seen water go up and down or not, that's called a waterfall. We are doing a lagoon, so we wanna go left to right. So after I have my lines on here, I'm just gonna kinda brush these out now see, if this was not white in the background, your paints would kind of pop all over the canvas and they wouldn't be smooth like this. The more you smooth them out, the more you're gonna get this really nice lagoon color. If your lines are going wonky and crooked and all the different directions, just refocus your hand, go a little bit slower, left to right, you can fix anything. So we've already got something that looks kind of water-ish. I really like blues in my water, so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add a couple more spots of blue. Ooh, I got a lot of paint on there, but that's okay. Cause like I said, I really like blue. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. And I'm gonna go back through. And I'm gonna leave some of these spaces a little bit darker. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. If you look, I'm going all the way from the left side of my canvas to the right side and back. Um, the reason I'm doing that is I want this blue to carry all the way to the edge. If I'm just sitting here doing this, 
on my canvas. I'm gonna have a really nice mix right here in the middle, but then my edges are gonna be ignored. I don't wanna ignore my edges. So pull it all the way across. Now, we are gonna focus on adding a little bit of these sky colors into the water. So right now, my sky has much more purple in it than pink. My original painting had a lot more pink in it. Everybody's painting should be different. So my, my water in my original had a lot more pink in it. This time I'm gonna add more purple in it. So I'm gonna take my corner of purple, just like I did before. I'm gonna add a couple of lines of purple. Remember, stick with those odd numbers. Every once in a while I'll do an even number, but it doesn't happen too often. Pull those across. If you are a mixy mixer, that's what I like to call people who mix all their colors into one color. Sometimes you gotta just stop. You gotta stop, you gotta look at it, and you have to think to yourself, um, okay, I mix that way too much. You do not wanna have all one solid color. If you do that, you are really going to be wasting your time because you should have just bought that color. We want to have all of these nice variations. So, oh, I'm loving this water right now. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm not washing it off at all. I'm gonna grab a little corner of pink paint and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add just a little bit of pinks in here and blend those in too. Ooh, that's a lot of pink up there. If you notice as you're doing this that you are losing some of your blue, easy fix, add more blue. <laughs> I do want some more blue in there, so I'm gonna go through and add a little bit more. Yep, I wanted that blue in there, that looks great. So now that I've got this part ready, I'm gonna go ahead and run across left to right, really smooth those colors out. Now my background is mostly finished. What I wanna do is add a couple of highlighted areas. And to add my highlighted areas, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my rag. Okay, I did not wash it, I just wiped it. And I'm gonna go in with some white and I'm just gonna add in some areas of white to kind of lighten it up. In these areas, I'm doing what I like to call ghost painting, which means that I'm barely touching the canvas. I want that white to show up. I don't want it to mix in. So I'm not going over it lots and lots and lots of times. I'm just putting a little bit in there and I'm just moving it around just a little bit. And I'm not gonna go left to right and left to right. So our background is officially finished. This is a good time to take a break. Let your background dry just a little. And when we come back, we're gonna add our trees. We're gonna add our grasses. I'm gonna teach you guys how to finger paint some lily pads, how to make rocks look like they have some form to them. We're gonna finish this picture out.